Hey, what is up, Blade Lovers? We've got a good one for you today, I think. I enjoy it. I could do these every day until I run out of big folders. <laughs> Some of my favorites are big folders. Um, I'm not a small folder guy. I've got a bunch. Some have been sent for review. Some I actually bought on my own, and they're fine little knives. But nothing is as satisfying as a big folder. So let's do a reveal. You've already got kind of a suspicion of what's going on here. But let's look at these six large folders. They're more than large in some cases. They're humongous. Are there bigger ones? I haven't brought out any cold steel ones because we know cold steel likes to get into the XL and the XXL. These are normal <laughs> large folders and some are as large as some of the cold steels. So whatever. Uh, variety of manufacturers here. We've got Best Tech represented, Artisan Cutlery. We've got um, Custom Knife Factory. We've got Bastinelli. And we have Max Ace, of course. Max Ace is the one that is known for large and robust folders. And here is the Sandstorm version 2.0. Now, um, I'm not going to be real acrobatic with these because I'm still nursing the cast on the uh, right hand. Comes off Friday, and this is a Monday. Not to date the video, but... It's going to be dated anyway. This is the latest iteration of their famous sandstorm that has also been done in the Sandstorm K version, which is the K110. This one's an M390. This is a rock solid beast of a knife. And it's appropriate that it's got a rock pattern on the titanium. Kind of a blasted, grayed out, uh, non coated. As far as I know, that's simply the uh, finish on there after the uh, bead blasting or tumbling or whatever they happen to do. I'm pretty sure that's not a coating. Well, let's open it up, right? Oh, look at that blade. And that's my second best thing about this blade is not just the size, but the complexity of that compound grind and the recurve. They've thrown everything into this thing that they possibly can. These big trenches here that you might call a fuller, they've actually got um, like a pebbling uh, texture inside of them. We've got uh, these giant thumb studs that actually act as the uh, stop for the blade because uh, there is your pin there that it is not touching, that is simply uh, holding the knife together. Is it? Uh, question is, yes, it is an integral because uh, that's what you're spending your money on. <laughs> and I'll try to leave links to where you can buy these. A lot of the Max A stuff comes and goes. So please don't be disappointed if you can't find these on the primary market from uh, Max Ace or White Mountain or what have you. But I'll try to give you the links, at least the links to the closest thing. There you can very plainly see the uh, hardened steel insert in the titanium. Well, there's your... Uh, steel marker m390 and it is just a beast of a knife look at all that left over got a good inch and a half or so left over in my medium large hands a little bit of jimping that's actually fairly effective there looks like it wouldn't be and uh just some excellent grind work there with the belt satin finish I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each one of these because i've got six to get through and i don't want to make a half hour video some other folks don't mind that, but uh, I don't like the long, long, long videos because all you're going to do is end up skipping through it anyway, right? Well, let's see how far we can back out without losing the background. Yeah, we can get to about there. That's pretty good. And we're going to lay this guy down. That is the Sandstorm 2.0 in M390 and titanium. One thing about this, too, that I didn't show is that it does have the uh, kind of the barrel lock here that you see on some of the Italian knives. And uh, if you turn it like that, then what happens is you cannot move the uh, 
frame lock over there. So I'm going to roll it back. It's difficult to engage. So quite frankly, it doesn't pose a problem with accidental engagement, uh, but I haven't really carried or worked the knife that much. It's eh, kind of a showpiece, okay? We have all got our safe queens. <laughs> I'm going to move on down the line. And this is a best tech knife. Interesting story behind this. This is the Keen 2, a design by Morgan Cohen's, Cohen's Craft. And I may need two hands to open that. Pardon me. It just doesn't open left side that well. It is a large knife. And one thing I may do, rather than weigh these, is just to give you the overall so you get a sense of the size. That is uh, nine and three quarter inches. Put that aside for just a moment. And uh, this cast is getting hard and hard and hard to work with, but coming off soon. Um, 10 inches and an eighth on the sandstorm. So yeah, it's a big one. Let's put her in there. So the Keen 2, the story behind this is that this was sold to me directly by the designer, Morgan Collins, whom I do a lot of custom knife work with, uh, meaning that I uh, purchase his custom knives and work on some designs with him and some uh, variants of his uh, standard designs. I've got a bunch of his customs, as you probably know. Uh, this one is in uh, what? Oh, S35VN. It's hard to tell. Uh, the story is that he had a few of these available for sale. They must have sent them to him as samples. But they do have uh, his signature on there. That's from the factory. I don't think it's custom signature. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, I've been doing some work with anodization. Do you want me to anodize this uh, before I send it out? I said, hmm, yeah, maybe. And there were some wild anodizations he was doing in different colors. And I said, you know, I really like just bronze. So uh, this is customized in a sense that uh, these knives don't come through with the bronze uh, titanium that I'm aware of from uh, Bestec. And uh, look at the size of that thing. And it's thin, though. Compared to the Sandstorm, it's a lightweight for its size. And we've got a blade over four inches on this. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll bring it in the picture for you. It's four and a quarter. It ain't small. <laughs> and uh, where are we going to fit this guy in? Uh, let's see if we can slide everything down just a bit. That might work. There we go. Getting better now. There we go. All right. Well, as I said, moving on down. Well, let's go over here. And here we have the Artisan Fairchild, a kombu design. This is, uh, and again, for whatever reason, I can't do this left hand, so pardon my clumsiness. Hopefully that's all going to be over relatively soon. The hand is healing up. Yeah, I reconstructed the thumb for me. It was not simple work. Cut here, cut there, nip and tuck. Um, Fairchild. Named after the Fairchild uh, airplane, I believe, which was like a flying fortress sort of a thing from World War II. Uh, my best recollection. This one is the gold anode version with S35VN blade. There's Kombu's logo right there. And it is a large, not quite as large maybe as some of the other ones, but look at the handle in the hand there. Got about the same amount sticking out as the others. And uh, as I said, I'll give you the overall just to give you some uh, perspective. And overall is nine and a quarter on that one. Just, just about nine and a quarter. Looks like we've got a flat grind. Looks hollow. You hit that like a bump up there. So, you know, it, I believe it could be a shallow hollow. Let's call it that. And if you happen to know, go ahead and chime in. Nice jimping there, by the way. Really nice jimping. And um, interesting uh, skeletonization here. Large, medium, small, kind of tapering off. 
The uh, anno tends to uh, stain a little bit, so uh, oils and whatnot make it look kind of funky. It's uh, the, the lock bar is like a slightly different color, and the clip is like a slightly different color. It, it's almost kind of a little bit of rainbow, but I've seen this on other gold anodizations. It's one of the drawbacks of that particular type of anno. It is a titanium NS35VN, as I mentioned. And uh, it's almost like a Shinlin cutter sort of thing, like what you see Vosti turning out in its, uh, its um, Nightshade series. I think it's Nightshade uh, because I know Tim Kell has a Nightshade as well. But um, yeah, kind of that Shinlin cutter look, only a real big full-sized one. And uh, I don't think that Kombu mentions that in any of his uh, literature about the design. But a very slicey, very, I don't, don't want to cut this finger. I cut my finger the other day on top of having the cast. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. And uh, life will get normal for me once again, I hope. Fairchild, best tech. And let me fit him in right here where he came from. There we go. All right. I'm going to go down here to... Well, no, let's wait. Let's wait. How about Dirk Pinkerton and this beastie, beastie, beast, the proponent. This is a special model that was offered for a while from Knife Center. Uh, it is the premium sort of materials, uh, M390 on the blade, titanium, titanium clip, I do have the budget version as well. Same size knife, same profile. Uh, this is just a tank. I think this and the Sandstorm so far, they are the tanks of the group. They are just heavy, heavy, heavy. And uh, this is nicely done the way they put the Artisan on the uh, backspacer there. Very solid, very industrial looking. Uh, it's all bead blast, so uh, that and the M390 made it sort of uh, a special uh, for Knife Center. Overall on this guy, probably not as long as the others, I'm thinking. It does have a full four-inch blade. Uh, it's just short of nine inches, like uh, eight and seven-eighths, I would call it. Not going to be throwing up any uh, specs on the screen. Each of these knives has an individual review. I say that all the time. You guys don't always go out and look at them. You're asking me questions about them. That's fine. You can ask the questions. I enjoy the interaction. Uh, I may or may not have time to answer your questions, depending upon how specific and detailed you are looking for. But uh, again, this knife has a review, and all the uh, other five have reviews on the channel. Full reviews, eh, at least uh, 12 or 15 minutes long. So. Hardened steel uh, insert, and this did come, don't have it on the table, with a, um, what do you want to call it, a cylinder, a uh, tube, not a tube, but uh, <laughs> a pin. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, a pin that goes through here and screws in that makes this a veritable fixed blade. And I don't know how it would ever be defeated with back wraps or back wax or any of that kind of crap uh, by putting that pin through there. And uh, I may do a video just on the back whack. Who knows? Back whack, back whack, back whack. Here we go. Nice double thumb studs on this guy. Uh, it does lock up on a pin. The pin is pretty robust. Got a mammoth lock bar there. Action on it is... Pretty quick to uh, lock up, but look at that. Just crazy. It's got a back flipper on it, which is good because that's what I do best with my left hand. All right. We now are moving on, and this is probably the grail knife of the bunch, and I think I showed this off for favorites of 2023, so pardon me if I'm bringing it out there again, but I just love the knife. It's a Bob Trizuola design, and it is the Eagle Rock. It is made by Custom Knife Factory. Custom Knife Factory components come from a number of different countries. 
Uh, they're not all Russia. Some, uh, I think some is uh, Japan, some is Taiwan. Uh, some might be China, I'm not sure. But they're hand assembled in Russia, as far as I know. This one got a new clip that I picked up for about 45 bucks or so from uh, NC Blade down in North Carolina. Um, the original had a very large uh, billboard of Trezuola on there. And I certainly don't want to uh, keep Bob from having his name on the knife, but it's right there as well. And I think that's a more appropriate place for it with his dragon logo, his Mayan dragon. Beautiful fuller. Uh, there's a few versions of this out there. This one is in the uh, black and red carbon fiber. Some didn't like it. I think it's beautiful. When the knife first came out, uh, some people were panning it in reviews because the blade was scraping or something on the sides. But look at the tolerances on this. Look at how fine that gap is on the sides where the blade is thick. And it is perfectly centered, as you can see right there when it's in the handle. Got the thumb discs to open it, has a very muted back flipper that still works great. It's got a lot of jimping on it. And that beautiful compound stonewashed uh, S90V blade on this guy. And uh, overall on this one, since we're talking big, I've got to prove it, <laughs> is a nine and uh, like 9.8, 9.85. It's still a big one, almost 10 inches. It is long, if not tall. I think it's a good balance. And uh, classic Loveless. Loveless? No. Yeah, I used to have some Loveless stuff, believe it or not, back when. Uh, classic Drizuola design, I was going to say. Yeah, if I can reach around here. Probably the biggest guy on the table, but we'll find out. This is the Bastinelli Big Drago Tech. And the Drago Tech has been a very popular sort of a design with Bastinelli. Let's see if I can flick it out. This is the newer version in M390. It is made by Lion Steel in Italy. It has the classic sort of sax blade design that uh, Bastinelli is known for. Ergonomically, this is near perfection. When you first grip it, you'll say, oh my God, that fits my hand like a glove, no matter what your hand size. These two finger grooves here work extremely well, and the other two fingers fall right in there. It's got an almost deep carry clip that's not transferable. He only puts it on the titanium side. It's got a glass breaker with a carbide uh, center, it looks like. Not a bead, but it is more of a sharp. Yeah, I'd say it's carbide. Hardened steel insert, M390. And uh, all of that information, except the logo, and let's see the other side here, is actually contained if you can see it, right within, I don't know if I'm going to bring my, anyway, if you can see it, fine. If you can't, it says Lion Steel Italy M390, right on the inside of the back strap, back spacer. Sorry. If I say back strap, somebody's going to say, oh, it's a back spacer. It's not a back strap. Terminology, terminology, terminology. I know. Collectors love terminology. Yeah, it's a good thing. They upgraded the thumb disc on this one to be uh, like a gear. And so it's a little prickly. Not going to hurt your finger, but uh, it's fairly serrated. So what happens is uh, you can use that to wave the knife open. Uh, getting back to the grip, you can grip it here you can grip it beautifully here. So if you needed more reach on this huge baby, uh, you can get it. I mean, these scallops here, these swales, whatever you want to call them, are just perfect. And the jimping is excellent. It's deep and it's just rough enough. It's a tall blade, very slicey. 
and very piercy. Let's get a measurement on it overall. And let's see if it is the largest. Yeah, it is. It is. If you don't include the glass breaker, it's uh, 10 and 3 quarters. If you include it, it's almost 11 inches. So this wins if it's a contest. <laughs> this wins the overall length contest. And certainly it's no slouch on the height either. I think the only one that's a little taller is the uh, proponent by Pinkerton. Dirk Pinkerton, great designs too. I mean, this proponent has seen a lot of life in different forms. Well, that's my, uh, that is my big knife collection. And hey, I went over 20 minutes. So uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope you don't need to skip around too much or get tired of me uh, talking. You guys be well. Thanks for joining me. And we're going to have more great content out there real soon. Take care.